So here's our big gnome. And we're going to paint it the same way. We're going to use a dry brush technique. And I'm going to do the tree first so that I can let some of the green um, paint dry as I build up to the lighter. So he's already the black. I'm taking this bright green. And again, same brush as before, but bigger. You could also use that chip brush for this, this um, portion of it as well. It's a big area and you could, you could certainly do that. I think I'll just kind of quickly just do underneath just to sort of make sure he's finished. So I just go under the, the branches there. And I really do, I know I'm working a little fast because we're here on the video and uh, I don't wanna bore you guys. But this part is pretty quick. It's not anything that you have to think about. Put on some Christmas music, make some hot chocolate. I have hot chocolate. Um, put on your Hallmark movie, whatnot. Get your family on Zoom <laughs> and uh, paint something together. And again, you can chit chat. You can have your, you know, it doesn't have to take all your attention. These are fun, easy, quick, and uh, festive, so. And I can almost go every which way. Unless I really try and have way too much paint on my brush, I am not going to cover up the little grooves. I really like the way that these are molded. They have a lot of detail and it makes it really easy to paint. There we go. So if you guys are on my Facebook page, that is great. You will see what I'm doing when. But if you really want to be informed, because sometimes I just don't trust Facebook, um, it'd be great to hop onto my email list. On the Facebook page, towards the top on the right, there is a button. You can click on that button and add, you to, you add yourself to my email list. That way, I, I can let you know when I have a class or I'm doing a video. I don't send tons of emails out, so you won't have to worry about every day hearing from the Tinker's Cart, but at least I know that I can get in touch with you um, outside of, you know, other than Facebook. And you can also visit my Tinker's Cart page if you are looking for any kind of cool and interesting Christmas gifts. It is an Irish shop, but we have things that appeal to everyone. We actually have um, our next Facebook live shopping event is on Wednesday night at 7. So it would be just like this. It's a live. We pop on at 7, but over on the Tinker's Cart page. And we show you all the new things that are in for Christmas. We have some specials. We do trivia and have prizes. We really have fun. Jen and I will show you all um, the new things. And you can shop from the comfort of your living room because we'll deliver or ship Um and we have some lots of new cool things to show you. So green's on there. I'm saving that brush for a minute to do my lighter shades of green. But in the meantime, I'm doing my little guy um, red. So similar to the Woody Wagon, except I'm not going to go maroon first. I want him to be a little brighter. There's not much to him. There's the tree, the beard, feet, nose, and his coat. The coat is going to be red. So I am again just dry brushing along here. I'm going as careful as I can around. I got a little boo-boo there, but that's easy enough to fix. And I think we'll just leave his little feet black. So easy peasy. You can see how I'm not doing a typical coat like you would on painting some things where you were trying to cover it carefully and solid. I don't really want a solid coat. I want it a little more solid than this, but that's gonna be when I come around for the second time. And always let your paint uh, first coat dry before you go to your second. So I'm trying to think. I've been jumping around here and there, but I've told you about the paints. Any sort of brand acrylic would, would be fine. Brushes I like for all my dry brushing. The chip brush or a bristly brush. These are kind of really oil painting, uh, acrylic painting brushes, canvas brushes. But I love the way they do a dry brush technique. You can always add little decorative techniques, if you wish, with a, sh a paint marker. Sharpie has them. Um, Posca markers are great for that. You want to write a name, make snowflakes, all sorts of cool things. I'm, again, going to hold on to that brush for a moment because I want to do another coat. My beard, I don't want to jump right to white. I want to do gray and then white 
just to give it a little more dimension. You might find when I'm painting a lot of things, I would use a few shades of the color. Sometimes if it's the same color, you could just add white and get a lighter shade. The greens, I like the three distinct greens. I like the bright green, the apple green, and then the leaf green in the middle. But the beard, I think if we just do it in a gray and then highlight with white, it's going to look nice. It's going to have um, a nice look to it. I may go, I was kind of sideways there, but you know what? I think on the beard, let's go with the direction of the beard, the way the beard grows, a little bit of gray, because it's going to have a nice, cool, feathered look. And I think that would be appropriate for the beard. And gnomes, let's talk about gnomes. I can't believe they're back. I love them. I love them back, was it in the 70s that gnomes were huge, remember? Macy's, I think, even used gnomes on their big advertising campaigns, and the bags had gnomes on them. And then there was that gnome book, which every, I love that book. And it's so fun because I, I love them, and it's so cool that they're popular again. I have some other gnome ceramic pieces I'll give you a quick uh, glimpse at when we're done. But they are cute. If he did not have a big tree for a hat, I think it would be fun to paint the hat to look a little like a knit hat or put a little fair isle pattern on it. I have some gnomes that will that will work on, which I'm going to do some, uh, I'll do a lesson next week and show you. It's like a little lantern, you put a tea light in it and I have it beside me here and I will show you. Sometimes your brushes shed just a little hair off the brush, it's no big deal. All right, so that's a good little gray coat for his beard just to start i'm showing a lot of black showing through still which is what i want and you can see i'm kind of almost painting in the direction of the beard there while we're waiting this actually tree is dry but let's let it give it a minute and in the meantime i think i'll just do the flesh color on his nose and i did bring out a flesh color did i not yeah okay and again i'm using these color these little uh two ounce acrylic bottles come in so many colors it's cool but remember you don't need a ton of them you could mix colors too it's not uh, that you need every shade under the sun i'm going to use the same dry brush technique i might go a little heavier on the nose i don't want a lot of black showing through on the front of his nose i like it in the crevices but let's just get a base coat on because i bet this might take us three coats and i'm just kind of i'm not going right into the crevice i don't need to i like the way it looks darker there how do you guys, what do you think? Put in the comments what you think. I'd like to know if people like this technique because I'm continuing it with other pieces, but I'd love to get your feedback. And, and if there's something that you'd like painted a different way or a certain way, let me know. I could uh, do that. That's how I did the um, Belique tree, actually. One of the ladies where I delivered it wanted it to match her Belique collection, and I love the way it came out. I don't know if you saw it, but it's on the page down somewhere. And uh, it looks so cool, yeah. Okay, so let's go and back to the tree. It's time for our middle shade of green, which is that, I kind of I kind of look at it as more of a leaf green. It's a duller green, but it's lighter in, in, in the shade. And again, it doesn't show up a lot. And maybe on, you can on the camera see it a little bit. It doesn't show up a lot. It's a little lighter, it's subtle. And that's the way I want to build up the colors on the tree. I want it to be subtle. I don't want to jump from black to, to apple green. And I've been putting all, as the videos are done and I edit them and fix them, you know, uh, whatever I do to them, I put them on YouTube. So some people do not have Facebook and they um, wanted to access the video when they get their tree. So the videos are on my YouTube channel, which is Tinker's Cart Art. So take a look there, subscribe to my channel, watch the videos at your leisure. I would love some um, suggestions. If there's something that you want to see painted, I have so many cool ideas, a lot of wood cutout pieces and some cute things for the holidays, but please share some ideas with my with me and, and the other followers. We could get a little um, list of new things people want to see painted. I'd be happy to do it. There is a little sketching video. I have a little sketching video on the YouTube channel. I also, if any of you um, subscribe to Skillshare, it's a fabulous site. There are classes on there for everything. If you want to paint, if you want to cook, if you want to design t-shirts, if you want to increase your search engine optimization, 
It's a fabulous learning platform. It is a fee every month, but I'll tell you, I am on there all the time learning something, and I do have a travel sketching video series there if you ever want to take a look. So that's Skillshare. I believe there are trials. I probably have a code I could give you if you're interested, let me know. But take a look. And uh, I do have a travel sketching video on there. I do love to sketch. I do sketch when I'm traveling. I love my sketchbooks. They're like little mementos from all my trips. And if you would like to learn too, I have a little video on YouTube, just a quick little thing to show you my sketchbook. And then you can also find me on Skillshare. So that's gonna be a minute. I'm gonna do my, my other coat on, the last coat on my um, coat here. If you saw the coat more, I might maybe look, you know, put trim like, you know, fur for Santa. Um, you don't really see it. It's kind of just underneath him. So I am not going to spend too much time on any little decorative details. You could, though. I mean, you could do a little buffalo plaid on here, which would be kind of cool. Go crazy. He's a good size. I think I, did I say he was 13 inches? I think he's about 13 inches tall. He's a good size guy. I guess they were out last year. I missed the whole ceramic thing last year, so I'm so glad I discovered it again because this guy I love. Okay, let's, you can see how quick and easy that works up. That is done. I'll put that in the water. I am going to go and get... I am going to clean this brush in order to put the white beard on. Um, I just want it to be a little brighter than if I had gray on my brush. But again, dry brushing, really get the wet you know, the wetness of the water out of that brush before you proceed. I'm going to grab a palette so I don't get any other colors. I'm just using these little um, styrofoam trays. Paper plates work fine. Um, I also like the palette paper you can buy at the art store or at Michael's. It's just a pad of paper, but it's got a wax finish, and you can spread your paints out on that and use it. Okay, again, we're just going to pretend we're, like, combing the beard right down. A little bit to the side, get a lot of it off my brush. How does that look? It's kind of interesting for me to see it in the, from your perspective in the camera there. I'm so close to it here. Again, any suggestions for how this filming is going? I kind of like this side view, but if, it, if, if straight up above is better, please let me know in the comments. I'm around to answer any questions, and I will keep my eye on the comments, and I will keep answering questions. You may also message me if you have something in particular you need. If you'd like to order a piece, the link I put in the description. I do not know if it's a live link, but you can always copy and paste it. Uh, I will go in and put uh, some more information after if you need to, too. I have a page where you can go and purchase any of the pieces. When you purchase a piece, I will deliver or ship it for free. I will include a QR code that will take you to the YouTube page for the video. It will tell you the supplies you need. Uh, you can, uh, rip, it gives you my information. If you need me, call me, message me, whatnot. I think that's good. I don't think I want it any heavier than that. Um, I think that looks good. Let's do another coat on our nose. I might even put a little blush on that nose after and make it a little bit of a... Of a of a uh, red on there, just so, like, if he's outside in the snow, he'd have a little bit. Oh, and speaking of snow, I didn't even mention it. We did the snow text. We painted the snow. But if you wanted to on any piece, we do this for my snowman canvases all the time, is to spatter snow on. If you just take an old toothbrush, a little white paint, and spatter, you would sprinkle your whole tree with snow, which is kind of cool. I do not think I want that on these two pieces, but uh, we will do something with that. Um, it's kind of a cool technique. Right, right. Now, the last little bit of um, green on our tree, just to make it pop, and then we can add the snow. I may add the snow brushed on this time, like I showed you a tiny bit on the um, Woody Wagon. I kind of like that look than, more than the snow text, but it's all uh, individual preference. Okay, so he is kind of big. So I'm going to just tip him. And again, I am going to... Another little boo-boo with my... Picking off the hairs of my brush. From the tip, each of these little tree branches is like a little point. From the tip up, I am just working this way. I'm working towards me. I'm taking a little bit of the lime, lime green, apple green paint. And I am just doing that little triangular tip. 
when I'm dry brushing, and you might be able to see it, is I take the paint, but I have to wipe some off. You, you, know, you don't really see it there, but I am just taking a paper towel and wiping that excess paint. And you almost need to add a little paint, pat it off on your paper towel for each branch. That way you've got a nice bit of color when you start. And right in the focal point that I want to emphasize, the little tri triangular piece of that branch is where the fresh paint goes. And it, and it gives you a nice look. And I love the way it feathers up towards the tree. You can do it section by section. You can keep twirling them around. I said when I had the Christmas tree, actually back in the day at the ceramic shop, we did have little turntables and we would sit those trees on there and then turn them. So a little Lazy Susan or a little turntable would actually uh, be ideal for this. How many of you all took ceramics back in the day? Every little corner there was a ceramic shop. I know there's lots of paint your own pottery places now, but uh, it was just really such a social thing back then. All the ladies, the Wednesday night ladies and the Thursday night ladies and I taught kids classes on Saturday mornings, and boy, I don't even want to tell you how long ago that is. I don't know how it could be that long ago if I'm not that old. I'm trying to convince myself. Age is only a um, figment of your imagination. Okay, see, doesn't that add? I know it. you might not look at the tree and say, oh, look at all those shades of green, but it just adds a little something. Kind of bring it up a little towards the top, wherever you think it might need a little pizzazz, a little pop a color you could add some more but I think that looks cool I really like the look of that okay cool a little bit more work on his nose because I don't want it to look really black underneath um, so I am quickly going to just in the like you can see there's a little bit it looks like a little black under the paint there which is I just want to get it up I like the black on the edges of the nose but the nose itself I kind of really want to emphasize that it's a flesh color and I'm taking the teensiest tiniest teeny bit of red and mixing it with some of that flesh I want to get a little bit of a rosy look can you see if I brush that and here's how you, you test it you don't want it to be too bright I'd rather go on like I just did and hardly see it than have it too dark so I am slowly just building it up a little bit more rosy colored paint it's such a little bit of red in with my flesh color there can you see that it's just a it's maybe not as easy to see on camera but it's just a little bit of a, a red glow to him and his little feet are staying black if you need to and you had a little boo-boo you would just take your black now and just touch it up once you spray it he's really gonna pop the trees I love sprayed I'm so used to seeing the glazed trees that we did back in the day these are not glazed these ceramic pieces are painted with the acrylics and sprayed so once they're fired and they're bisque that's the only firing they get. I know people are a little confused because before you would glaze them and then they would fire again and you'd have that really shiny, glossy finish, which is cool. But this is the ease of this, of doing it right in your home, not having to take it out to be fired, waiting for it. You get that spray on there with that high gloss and, and it really looks like a glaze. So um, I think you'll like the way it looks. Uh, the snow. I don't want to put that uh, heavy snow on there. I want to do just the brushed snow look like I showed you, and I'll show you what that looks like, and we can pull the woody wagon back over, and you can really see like which way you might like that. All right, so I just take some white on a brush. I'm using a little flat brush here. Uh, you can use the sable brushes too. Either one works for this sort of technique. I don't want to hop onto um, a branch that the paint is wet because we would end up with green snow. So I'm doing this rather quickly. I would probably let it dry a little bit longer if you're painting it at home. But again, I just take a little white and I start in that little triangle area, just like we were putting the green on, and I brush it towards me. Why I like to do the brush on snow sometimes is I like that feathered look of it coming, feathering back towards you. So I would just go along and just do that. I would let it dry, and I, because I want it to look a little thicker and a little um, brighter, I would do a second coat. But I kind of like the look of that, I don't know why, on this guy more than the snow text. So you can kind of see what that looks like. Come on, guy, don't roll. He is roly-poly. So that looks a little more placed. I like the feathering look of it. The woody wagon has the snow text. It's a little more random and globby. You can't 
you can put it on where you want it, but it kind of moves around a little bit. You could do a combination. You could do this white like this and then just touch a little bit of that snow text on. You could also, I brought out all kinds of glittery paints too, because if you want to do a crystal or a glitter, um, might be cool too. Some of that glitter is, like these are little really big pieces of glitter in there. That might be too much. But then you've got some that's just, just a little bit of glitter. But the crystal one I put out by accident before. Let me try a little bit of that on top of the white. That's kind of a cool look. It's pearly. It's got little tiny bits of, of glitter in there. You can't really see it on camera maybe, but it's going to dry with a little sheen and a little glitter. Feel free to try um, anything like that. And again, the technique with the toothbrush, you could spatter with snow and he would be snow all over. It would get onto his coat and his shoes and things, but it would almost look like he's out in a snowfall if you want to try that. You could do his coat any other color you wanted. It doesn't have to be the black, um, the red. You could do green and paint the stripes. You could do a blue and put holly. It's so fun because that's what's fun. Um, what's cool is everybody's is coming out a little different. I love seeing pictures of people's uh, pieces all done. I'm putting another little coat on his nose. It just, I saw a little of that black showing through. This is when you look at your piece, you touch it up or sometimes take a break, walk away. And then when you come back, you kind of know what it needs. I'm getting a little bit more blush on there. And that's it. He's going to, and you know, it's, he can have the star. So I love that. He's got the star. He's got the lights and I'll put the light under there so you can see sort of how he lights up too. Wouldn't it be fun with the re one of the regular trees you painted with your little woody wagon and your little camper? So cute. Now you guys are great for uh, having the patience to sit and watch paint dry here. Thank you for that. I'd love to see pictures of yours. If you do um, paint one, I'd love to see pictures. Please share them. Any tips or techniques you want to share with myself or your fellow painters, I would love to hear about it. Let's plug him in and see how he looks lit up. Again, let's just move. Let's just, oh, you don't want to see that old elbow. Here we go. Um, we can kind of see him. Let's see. Be, if it was dark, it would be kind of cool. But anyways, what do you think? Who likes the gnome tree rather than just the regular Christmas tree? Hi, Deb. Hi, Lauren. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not sure why I have to bring people on camera. I'm not, that might just be something I don't need to do. Uh, if you, anyone had problems coming on or any technical stuff, let me know. This is new to me, and um, I just want to kind of make sure it's a good experience for all of you guys. Okay. We did the woody wagon. We did the gnome tree in less than an hour. You can understand that I painted rather quickly and not as carefully as I would. I will touch up. I will show you pictures of all the sides. I will answer your questions. I showed you the camper. I am excited to paint this little guy because I love saguaro cactuses and I have this thing since I was in Arizona. So he is adorable. He gets all lit up. He could be with your camper and your truck if you were traveling out west with those pieces. And a couple of other pieces just to show you quickly and then I'll let you get on with your day because it's Saturday and I hope everybody has a great day. I was so happy to see the sun. This is a little snowman. He just gets a little tea light. He comes with the tea light. He is adorable. I am excited to paint this guy. He's next probably. He's a, a gnome um, with a tea light. Is Actually, yeah, I put a little tea light in the back there. And I was thinking about painting his hat like a little Fair Isle look, but with all those stars that might be a little busy. Uh, I have some little cute gnomes that have little hats, little hugging snowmen and gnomes and whatnot. We can do that technique with those. So this guy's pretty simple. He would be painted pretty much like the um, big guy. Just pick out your colors. Start with a darker shade of whatever color you wish to do. do bl uh, you can do black if you want. I like the way it looks. Black. And then the color that you want is hat. Maybe if it's red, you start with the maroon and then you go bright red. Or a dark green and a light green. Or a gold and a yellow. Um, a burnt sienna and an orange, anything darker and then a lighter shade dry brushed, letting it dry in between. The beard, I like the gray and white technique, um, but you can do any color beard. If you want a ginger, you could do a, like the burnt sienna color with like a, a ginger beard would be cool. Anyway, this guy lights up. This is a little snowman. He's got the stars on his hat too, and he does light up and uh, with the same little light kit as the trees, but no lights. He just gets lit up. Pretty cute. I picture him with little holly on his um, 
headband. You could write a family name there. You could personalize it, which is cool. And then we've got lots of ornaments. So I'm going to make up some ornament kits. I have a cute penguin upstairs too. But So I've got these little ornaments, the little gnome. That would be a good one to do a little knit pattern on his hat. I'm going to do these the same technique. I'm going to paint these all black. I'm going to dry brush the colors. <clears throat> they make it a little speedy. I remember painting lots of ornaments, and I would paint with my little brush, and I'd paint the white, and then a little nose, and all the, the, you know, the busy work. But I like the way the black goes on. You dry brush over it. It's, you don't have to be as careful, but wouldn't it be fun to still do stripes on that little scarf, um, little snowflakes on the hat maybe? I'm going to sell these in little kits. Um, so you could get like three or four little ornaments and, and, and whatnot to paint. I will work on that. I haven't done that yet. So those are the new pieces that I'm waiting to paint. I'm going to do the, the camper next and that tall-hatted gnome. Um, any questions or anything while I got you here? Because I'm not even sure... Um, I haven't been able to look at the comments yet, but you know what I do? I'll let you get on with your day. I will sign off. I'll take a look at the comments. Please um, share with your friends, like my page. And it was really fun Saturday morning. I loved seeing you guys and painting with you. Please, any criticism or, tech, or um, things I could do differently, I would love to hear about it. So enjoy your day, and thanks for watching. Bye.